Hello international business, thank you for viewing my presentation. Today I have been decided to discuss the topic of video conferencing and how it relates to business on an international scale. So to start off, let's talk about what video conferencing is. Well it's actually really simple, it allows people in different locations to communicate with each other, more specifically through the use of not only audio, but as well as video. In most common households, we usually have location 1 and as well as location 2. Location 1 being you and location 2 being your grandmother in Israel or your best friend. However, on a business scale, we usually use something called multi-conferencing. This allows businesses to communicate with people in many different locations. Location 1 can talk to location 2, and location 3 can talk to 4, and they all can talk to each other simultaneously. All you need for casual video conferencing would be a video camera that is compatible with your computer, a microphone, as well as the computer itself. However, when conversing with a larger group of people, the casual methods can become tedious. So many companies have created external and more professional ways of conferencing, methods that are much better than the free programs that you get on the web. These methods are much more expensive, however yield greater benefits to the workplace. So before we get into details, let's talk about how video conferencing came to be. Well, video conferencing could have been established since the invention of television. It was most commonly used in NASA missions and used large satellite trucks. However, it was first truly established in 1968. It was much too expensive to do for long periods of time for most companies to afford, and the fact that the video quality was actually just so low. But fast forward to 1980, compressed video and audio was allowed, but it just had way too many restrictions on it. And if we fast track a bit more to 1990, IP video conferencing was available, which is basically the internet that we have today. And finally, in 1992, companies started to create free programs like MSN Messenger. Whatever happened to that? There are some really good terms that fit in nicely with this invention. This method of business communication opens up multinational corporations to become more globalized. For example, a company who outsources to China could be able to talk with the producers face to face without hastily booking a flight and having to fly thousands of miles, or having an informal conversation over a phone because we all know not anything could be happening on the other end. This also helps strengthen relationships by seeing the individuals so that it becomes a lot more personal. This method also implements the knowledge economy. This is done by using smart technology to leap over the obstacle of miscommunication and overall more efficiency within the workplace by being able to have a real discussion with more than one individual at separate locations. Also, another word that is important is headquartered. Many companies that are headquartered miles away from other locations find it hard to come to an agreement about things. So in addition to video conferencing, there are many other tools that are used to send files instantly to other parties at the other end. So if an agreement could be made over a conference, certain legal documents could be signed and faxed right there and then. Now, I'd like to talk about a company that has used video conferencing successfully. Well, the thing is, we don't know if large multinational corporations like McDonald's and Adidas use this trend because they don't release it. That's because video conferencing has become a norm rather than a method. It's common knowledge to know that a large MNC is going to use this method of communication. However, a company station off in New Zealand called Meridian was confirmed in an interview using video conferencing in their enterprise. It's an energy company that uses renewable resources like water, wind, and solar light. They supply up to 40% of New Zealand's energy. As a result of using video conferencing, not only did it help build their relationships with their locations and keep them in constant connection, but it also saved them tons of money by reducing travel in flights and gas in cars costing them way less than it would if they were to do it normally, as well as their ultimate goal to produce emissions into their atmosphere. This company not be the largest, yet use video conferencing successfully and to their benefit. What is the future of video conferencing? Not only do I believe the future is bright for this particular invention, but so do many others. With online statistics, it has been said that 75% of businesses are to adopt this new form of communication. I believe this is the future for businesses to be a lot more successful than they are now. It was just like the telephone. Once created, everyone adopted it, and businesses there became more efficient. But now that there is a more personal, instant, and professional way to meet with individuals across continents, getting a real look at the person you're doing business with will take over nations. This is definitely a trend, and unless an instant transportation device is created, it won't become a fad. Everyone uses it, whether it be Skype, or FaceTime, or Uvu. Everyone will continue to use it because human interaction is what makes the world turn. Humans will always interact and this piece of technology unlocks that barrier that distance has on it so thanks for watching